What's up, D Buzz? What's up, you guys? What's up, D Buzz? What's up, D Buzz? Y'all already know what time it is. It's time to go. No, it is real talk, Diva time, real talk Wednesday, real talk, bitches, real motherfucking talk, okay? Yes, wash day for me yesterday. Girl, my hair is like a big, puffy little. Does this not look like that freaking bun or like that, um, what was it? I did a video like a couple of weeks ago, um, it was a synthetic afro puff and so I made it small but why does it look just like this like it looks just like this like and let me tell y'all normally I will have my hair in a bun because for some strange odd reason I just feel like me wearing this puffy ponytail on the top of my head makes me look crazy like seriously it makes me just look crazy and I cannot put it in a bun right now because like look this is this is my curls like there's no way I'm putting this in a bun. Um, the only way I'm going to be able to put it in a bun is when I'm ready to do a wig video and I just braid two cornrows on the side. Within like an hour, like a few hours, that my hair will straighten, it'll tame itself down, and then I put it in a bun. But girl, I mean, I don't know. Does it, do I look crazy? Do I look strange? Like deranged? Like a little bit offset? Like, you know, I don't know. But I'm going to say this. A bitch is not happy. I'm definitely not fucking happy. First of all, before I even get into not happy, look, hello, <laughs> yes, bitch, what? Okay, Chi Cheese Original Margarita. Okay, so what? It got 10% alcohol. This will do. They have these at Kroger's, which y'all call, but it's fries. It's called fries here, but it is by Kroger's. They have these four for five dollars, right? They have the margarita one, the skinny margarita one, which a bitch like me needs to be drinking all the time. The skinny one, okay? Then they have the pink lemonade one, which has 12 ounce, 12 percent alcohol. And they have the iced tea one. The um, I want to keep calling it Lipton iced tea, but oh my god, I used to drink it all the time as a young youngster. Um. You know, the iced tea, whatever it's called, where you can get drunk. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Why am I? This is what old age does to you when you forget the name or something. But you know the iced tea drink, but it's not really iced tea. It's a drink. Oh, my God. I cannot remember the for the life of me. And I used to drink this all the time. I only drank this all the time is because I didn't know what else to fucking order. Okay? But if you ask me now, I will tell you, let me get a hammer. Let me get an orange juice and vodka. Let me get a cranberry juice and vodka. Like, I don't really drink brown liquors except for that one particular drink. And it's like a mixed drink, so you can't really consider that a brown liquor. But that's 12%. And let me tell you, that one girl will have you... Well, it won't really have you like that, but it'll give you a nice tiny little buzz. But plus, I mix it with, look, hello, some Moscato. Yes, I will mix this with my Moscato wine. It does say, though, grape wine with natural flavors. <laughs> Four for five dollars. I think I done spent like twenty dollars so far because I I keep buying them. They are so cute. Like little, like literally, they're so cute. But anyway, so yes, that's probably why my ass is fat and have gained some of that eleven pounds back. Yes, that's why I'm mad. I'm I'm fucking pissed off because I go to the weight doctor today. What the fuck is going on with me? Like I'm gonna have to get my thyroid checked out because listen, let me tell y'all. <sighs> If I ain't working out every day with Grow With Joe, a bitch is out there in the fucking heat with her little neck fan on, walking for like a mile and a half. And so I'm, I'm, I don't understand how the weight is coming back. Like, I eat three meals a day, okay? Yeah, I do have an addiction to those trolleys. And I can't, I can't imagine that that is fucking with me. But some days I don't even eat three meals a day and I know that's an issue too but the three meals that I eat a day is like good meals you know what I'm saying who's that pancake is that is that name it's three meals so it's like okay it's decent meals it's not nothing like I ain't going to no buffets I have a yogurt and a banana for breakfast for lunch I either have like either I, I try to have lunch like the heaviest meal of the day because at night, I really don't want to eat that heavy. Girl, I don't know what the fuck to do. I haven't, um, I missed like three days of walking or just basic exercise. Um, because now every Thursday, 
every Thursday I have to go to the vein doctor, the vascular doctor, the vascular doctor, every Tuesday and every Thursday. Every Tuesday because they have to check out the work that they did on Thursday. So um, I have to go to the vascular surgeon, the vascular surgeon, the vascular doctor every Thursday for 12 weeks, okay? <sighs> Because I have vein disease, all right? And I didn't know there was such a thing called vein disease. I have, like, I've, I've explained this to you guys in so many videos. I have the worst circulation in my legs. So when you look at my legs, I really don't like to show them a lot in, like, try-on hauls. Because they're not really, like, the prettiest legs there is. Like, you know, you know those old commercials where they'd be like, who wears short shorts? Not this bitch over here. Okay, my legs, the veins in my legs are really not attractive and they're, they're, they've gotten really, really, really bad over the past couple of years. And as a young teen, I did have spider veins, like you can see them on the outside of my leg, but not varicose veins. So now my legs in certain areas are looking really bad with the varicose veins. You ever see like an older person when their legs are like huge, like tree trunks, that's just like really big. And their veins are looking like they're just they're about to pop out of their skin. Well, I have certain spots. I have areas on my legs that are like that. And over time, I did not realize that, you know, the reason why my ankles and, like, calves are swelling every night is because of the pressure in my legs. So after vein mapping and over the years, you know, it has gotten worse and I has. I've been supposed to wear those ugly ass orthopedic socks, but I refuse to wear those orthopedic tights, whatever. I just hate them. They're so ugly and they're hot. But anyway, like the vascular surgeon has explained to me, your vein and the blood flow is supposed to be like a one way. It's supposed to go up one way, one direction. But for me, it's both directions. It's going up and down, which makes a lot of pressure, which makes my veins protrude onto the skin surface. And you can see them which also makes me feel like I have been walking for days when actually I haven't, you know? So there are days when I get up and my legs, I can walk to like, I can walk, like just start, start off walking, like for my walks and girl, it'll feel like I have been walking in my sleep, like sleepwalking because my legs are like, girl, bitch, I'm tired right now. They feel really heavy. And at the end of the night, they're always swollen. On top of that, I also have on my feet, plantus fasciitis, which is the soles of my feet. So I have to get injections for that in September because the, when let me tell you, my feet be hurting so bad, I be wobbling like a pregnant person or just like an older person. So that's called plantus fasciitis. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I have no arch left and that's what that's from. So I have been going through a lot lately and um, I'm just like really over it. Plus I'm just trying to be I'm trying to lose the pounds. Like, like seriously, I know I might not look big to you guys, but I feel it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want, I, I don't, I don't like when my face looks like this. Like, I just want to lose 30 pounds. That's it, bitches. That's it. And I, you know, I, I'm just really disappointed in a lot of shit in my life and not even in my life. Um, but I'm, I'm just disappointed in a lot of things. And, um, <sighs> I'm just really trying to get aboard and just do the right thing. And I don't know if drinking wine is 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 causing me to be fat or gain weight. But I'm going to drink this shit right now because I feel like it. And on top of that, like, I don't know, but I have come I have come to terms with, bitch, I don't give a fuck what you think about me. Like, on some real shit, like, this is not to any of my supporters, but I'm just going to say this. On some real shit. I have been trying to be so humble and cordial to everybody on here and just I try to hold my tongue because I don't ever want to offend people or whatever but I'm at the point in my life bitch I'm 47 years old I don't give a fuck who I offend no more okay if you don't like what the fuck I say too bad you know what the x button is that get the fuck off my channel straight up I'm tired of it I'm tired of busting my ass for people to talk shit and I'm just tired of it so you know what I'm saying I have had enough going on in my life enough bullshit to where now I'm I'm finally over the shit. I don't give two fucks about what anybody thinks about me. Let's just mention this too. So y'all know last Wednesday was made two full years that my son passed away. 
okay? And I had a great day. When I say a great day, meaning I didn't cry. That's what a great day to me is. I didn't cry and I didn't mourn over it like that. You know, I know what day it was. I didn't need nobody to fucking remind me of that day. I didn't. But at 6 o'clock in the morning, why do I wake up to a text message from you know who? Talking about, you know, my son and remember him with a smile like you know all i did was say thank you i i hearted the message and i said thank you that's the first time that i have responded to him since he has texted me and emailed me in the past few months i i refuse to but because it had something to do with my son i just hearted it and said thank you and i left it at that that was a dry ass reply please you don't have to reply to me two times after that like that's the part listen on some straight up shit I don't give a fuck who thinks I don't have a man or I'm lonely because bitches, I'm not fucking lonely. I'm not lonely for dick. I'm not lonely for a man. Y'all really don't know what the fuck I have going on in my life at this moment to care two fucks about a relationship. But what I do know is this. If you leave me the fuck alone, leave me the fuck alone. Straight up, point blank, period. All right. So for all you ugly ass bitches who swear, oh, I'm lonely and I don't have a man and he left me or whatever. You think about yourself sucking dick in the fucking, where did you suck dick at? You said again, you gave fellatio to somebody in some public restroom. Okay. And you've been married three times. You just, just shut the fuck up. Okay. Sometimes people just need to shut the fuck up. And I'm here to say that today, whoever don't like me, shut the fuck up because I don't care. And I'm pretty sure everybody who likes me don't don't fucking care but you guys know what Wednesday was last Wednesday and um I just felt like this don't fucking text me because you feel like today is a certain day and that's at my weakest point and you're gonna get a reaction out of me you got a response and that was that I just don't like shit like that just I just if you're gonna leave me leave me the fuck alone period like for good and I mean that sincerely wholeheartedly but anyway, we're going to pass because I'm not about to waste my time on that bullshit. Yeah, I'm just really upset. I'm not even upset, but I'm kind of disappointed with the whole um, weight loss journey thing. Like in, in, in a whole nutshell, you, you ever feel like you just want to say fuck it and, and not even bother? Just feel like, you know what? I'm not about this. I'm done. I, I'm This is over. I've ended this. I give up. White flag. You know what I'm saying? Like victory, whatever. That's how I'm starting to feel. And I don't want to feel like that because I know that if I do feel like that and just be like, fuck this weight loss thing, that I'm just going to get bigger. All right. And I don't want to be any bigger than what I am right now. So I, I just don't know what to do. Like, I'm not going to give up. I'm just going to keep going. But like, God damn, if I work out like twice a day, what else do I supposed to do? Why are my jaws shut? Like, I don't I don't really know what else to do. And if somebody has some advice, then. Let me the fuck know. But anyway, I have been working on my lash line. I did share that with you guys last week. So these are some of them in here. Like, not like all of them, just some of them. But I did have my packaging, and I really want to show you guys. Oh, my God. I want to. It's so freaking cute. Like, look. Okay. Come on. Zoom in. So that is the packaging. I like I like stuff to be like really classy and I don't know like I'm not one for a whole bunch of glitter and then I am. I like sparkly, but also I like it to be really really classy like. So and I felt like these were classy and also then I do have like I have like two kind of collections going. If you get my drift, like there's, you know, like the really big lashes and then I have the subtle ones like I have one right now up here, which are, hopefully you guys can see them because they're really subtle. They're just plain, you know, like not everybody wants to be wearing like humongous lashes every day. I know I don't. So, you know, I try to do a collection where they're they're kind of like basic like natural looking so I, I i was thinking of names and um honestly i don't really want to say the names but i have mink and then i have vegan so these are the vegan ones okay these are the vegan ones and the vegan ones are also um hopefully you can get that see that the vegan ones are also 
smaller than the um, actual um, mink ones. Okay, so let me show you guys what the mink ones look like versus the vegan ones because the vegan ones are smaller and they're basic not basic excuse me they're not basic but they are more work attire friendly i mean bitch you can wear whatever lash you want to wear but okay so you know what i'm saying you can wear whatever lash you want to wear to work but these are the mink ones okay this is a pair of mink ones and this is a pair of vegan ones so you could definitely see the difference some people don't like all of this. I was one of those girls who didn't like all of this, but, and just loved this. But now I like both of them. So a couple of months and everything will be all set to go. But you guys let me know what you like in a lash because I really would like to take that into consideration when I am completing my endeavors, okay? My endeavors. So right now I have on the vegan ones. So, you know, I will let you guys know, but, you know, just keep an eye out for it. But anyway, we're going to get into this because I have talked you guys' ear off. So let's get into this real talk, okay? Huh? 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 What? Damn. All right, so this one, she, look, this girl don't let me know that this real talk was long in like the first um, three sentences. Like when I say it's long, look, okay, this. God damn. You ever see that movie called um, The Never Ending Story with this big dog and he's he's like a big dog, but he's it's, a, it's called Never Ending Story. Just look it up. It's mad old, okay? But y'all already know about the real talk. If you want a real talk, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylover2012 at gmail or aprilsrealtalk at gmail. I'll post them both down below. Make sure you put in the subject line of the email, real talk, so that way I can get them. Girl, we're going about to do this real talk. I'm not going to waste no more time because this is super duper long. Hello, April. I want to start off by saying that I have been watching you since the beginning and I love you to death. I have watched so many of your videos over the years and decided it is now my turn to submit a real talk. I'm warning you in advance that this is going to be a lengthy email, so get you a drink ready. Hello. All names have already been changed. All right, here goes nothing. Whew. My name is Luna, and I'm 33 years old and have a three-year-old son with my ex-boyfriend named James, who is 52. I am black, and James is Italian. That's a good mixture because my grandfather's a 100% Italian. And my parents, well, half black, half Italian. So, you know what I'm saying? Yes, as you can see, there is a bit of an age gap. I'm also not James's first dip into the cocoa pot if you get my drift. Mm. But if I didn't care about it because I was in love with this man for five years and we had a pretty good life. She didn't care about it. She was in love with this man for five years and they had a pretty good life. James and I met in 2015 in Las Vegas. Yes, I lived on the West Coast for a time too, at a job where we were working together. I'm originally from Queens, New York, him from Cali. Okay, girl, you already my friend. Flushing, Queens, New York City, born and raised. Okay. I was 27 at the time and he was 46. We hung out and despite our age difference, had a good time and had lots in common. In 2017, I gave birth to our son, and that was the happiest moment of our life. He was the first child for both of us. Wow, that's 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 serious for James, because he, you know, he oh she just she should call him James, right? Yeah, James. Unfortunately, that this is when our relationship started to go downhill. Being that this was my first child, I went through the normal things, losing sleep, and even had a bit of postpartum depression even though I didn't think so at the time. Although James and I split the responsibilities of our son 50-50, he didn't give a damn about me anymore. We were both stressful and tired from having a new baby, but he was taking his frustrations out on me. No, he never put his hands on me. It was all emotional. I just didn't see it at the time. 
Whenever I would try to be alone for even just 10 or 15 minutes, he would come looking for me. What are you doing? He would say. He would also be on my back about little things and would call me lazy, like I didn't deserve to relax. He, his entire demeanor just went downhill. In August 2018, we moved back to the east, to North Carolina, to be closer to my family to help with the baby. Although I was born in New York, I had grown up in Charlotte but did not want to go back there. So we moved to Raleigh. North Carolina is not the worst place in the world to live, but I was not thrilled about going back. I listened to James and he convinced me that it would be better for us to be closer to my family to help with the baby. When we got back to Riley, Riley, we and James' sister Lily all moved in together. We lived together for two years and it was horrible. James and I started fighting all the time, a lot of it in front of our son, which I was not proud of. He was negative about everything and never wanted to go out anywhere unless it was to run an errand or to go to grocery shopping. He took care of us, yes, but he was not there emotionally. I no longer felt like his girlfriend, just a nanny to my own child. Like I had just been bred to have our own son, and now that it was done, my feelings didn't matter anymore. This is how I started to feel all the time. He never even gave a shit when I was fired from my job for taking time off to care for our son because he was in the hospital due to his asthma. He basically said it was my fault because my boss and I constantly got into it. That is a story for another time, but she was a bully that I didn't take shit from. I constantly told James how I was feeling and that we needed help. I found a therapist, but we only had one session as James did not like the fact that the therapist was calling him out on his shit. Although I mentioned that we needed a third party to help us through our issues, he said that he could work it out, we could work it out on our own. Of course we didn't because we never put any effort. Oh, excuse me, because he never put any effort. So last year, May 2020, in the midst of this pandemic, I finally had enough. I had not been emotionally invested in our relationship for over a year at that time. So in my mind, we were done. Nor were we having sex anymore, which was another thing that drove me nuts because he never wanted to touch me, nor did he ever let me touch him. I mean, we never kissed. I couldn't hug him without him pulling away from me. It was just awful and I had to stop trying to be intimate and passionate with him. I went to get advice from a family attorney about my options when it came to custody of my son. My mother was there for support as well. About two weeks later, I told James that I was going to move in with, that I was going to move in with my mom at the end of our lease, which we only had a month and a half left at the time. He didn't argue or even ask me not to leave, which didn't surprise me. He felt it was best and we just started talking about our son. I told him that I sought advice from a lawyer so that we could do things in a civil manner without having to go to court and he was pissed. He said that I betrayed him and that I should have told him that I was going and that he would have went with me, which is bullshit. I told him that I didn't need his fucking permission and that I could walk and talk to whomever I, excuse me, I could talk to whomever I wanted. Then here's the kicker, April. Remember, remember that I told you that his sister lived with us, his big sister to be exact, right? She said it was horrible. Well, she is a paralegal, but does not work in family law in any shape or way or form. Once James told her that we were breaking up, she started sticking her nose into our business. Now, up until that point, I hadn't had any issues with her. She loved helping out with our son and was a more positive person than her brother. So I wasn't exactly surprised to see that she was going to put in her two cents. One thing that I noticed with all of us living together was that he always did what his sister asked of him and always took her advice. But when I mentioned something, he would shut it down real quick. I soon discovered that they were very codependent of each other and had been there and had been their entire lives. They didn't speak to the rest of their siblings. They were five of others or their mother. Their father had died years ago. Don't get me wrong. I get it. I was never trying to come between them, but they didn't have boundaries. And her sticking her nose in this custody stuff just definitely pissed me the fuck off and let them both and, and I let them both know about it. I had gotten so pissed that I went ahead and retained the attorney so that we could get the custody paperwork down so that we could just have it filed at the courthouse. His sister tried to persuade me that we could have one of her lawyer friends do it, but I told her no. When I told them both that I had a lawyer, she had the nerve to say, oh, you retain counsel? I'm going to need the name of that attorney. I responded to her in front of James as well. No, I will let your brother know because he is the father. 
She then left the house as she had to go to work. Thus, I cussed James out right after about his nosy ass sister and texted her letting her know to mind her own business and that we had to work this out for ourselves. I got so pissed April that I just went ahead and served his ass while I was still living there with him. So after going back and forth between our attorneys, we decided on a rotating custody schedule so that we could each get our son 50% of the time. I moved in with my mom when the lease was up and was crying all the time. Not over our relationship, but because I wasn't seeing my baby every day anymore. I had also started a new job at the beginning of all of this, and that was the adjustment for me that I was going through so much shit. Now to the present. We have been doing this joint custody thing for a year now. I've gotten used to it, but I still don't like it. I got another job working from home, and I'm in a better place emotionally. James and I have been cordial when it comes to our son, but I didn't have to cuss him out. But I did have to cuss him out a few times since we split up because of what his attitude, of course. He is taking care of his son as he should be. I decided on joint custody because I know how much my son loves his father and I did not want to take that away from him. Oh yeah, and did I mention that he is still living with his big sister? Mm. However, my son is turning four in December and I have to start thinking about kindergarten. Thus, that schedule is going to have to change. I was going to discuss it with his father, but I honestly see that that was a waste of time. Besides, that is what lawyers are for and at this point I am done talking. I want my son to live with me at least 70% of the time, especially when he starts school. Things is going to be another battle. This is going to be another battle, and I know it. Plus, I need to let James know that I am not staying in North Carolina until our son turns 18. I don't want him growing up in the South, and I want to get the hell out of here in the next three to five years. But North Carolina family law is, tr is tricky. They're all about keeping the family together. Oh, and in case you were wondering, no, I have not been seeing anyone since we broke up. But I'm getting that itch to start talking to guys, mostly because I'm lonely and have been starving for affection and passion for years now. So April, I told you this was going to be a long one. What do you think of my situation? How should I approach this custody thing with our son and move on to talking to other men? Thank you so much and love you always. P.S. Attached are our photos of myself. She is so pretty. Like seriously, she just looks so familiar. She really does. Her smile, she has like the prettiest smile. You, you know what? I, I like to look at people when they smile because I can see something. You know how you can just look at somebody and tell if they're really happy through their smile? And she's in this picture with her son and she is just a cheesing. Like, for real, she's cheesing. Like, you can tell that this is pure happiness in her face. Like, this was, it was long, but girl, it wasn't that long. It wasn't that bad. Okay. Luna and James got like a big age gap. She is 33, right? And James is 52. That is a, that's, that's like almost 20 years. That's 19 years, hunty. Okay. So you know what? With him, he kind of sent his ways. Cause girl, he already old. He not old. Okay. Cause look, he, he, <laughs> look, I'm 47, but he's not old, but you know what? He's, he's older and he is definitely setting his ways it seems like he may be somewhat mature I don't, i'm not really sure but you got me sis when you said something about that motherfucking sister girl let me just take a whole sip of a drink for you for that one now first of all i'm gonna say this i agree with you they do you know it's sad it's not even sad but you always want to get along with your boyfriend or your baby father or your husband or your fiance's family. You always want to get along with them. I mean, you don't have to because they're not part of your relationship, but they are kind of part of your relationship. But out of a mutual understanding and out of respect, you would want to get along with them. And that's just the thing to do. That's the humanly thing to do is to want to get along with them. But the thing that gets to me is when they dip their nose in your business, like, bitch, mind your motherfucking neck, okay? Straight up, mind your fucking neck. That's what his sister needs to do. She needs to mind her neck. She didn't need to know who the lawyer was. Honey, you're a paralegal. You're not a lawyer. You, what you need to do is mind your neck. It's a, a conflict of interest. You don't need to be on your brother's side. You need to stay neutral and mind your motherfucking business is what his sister needed to do. Now, as far as you and James' relationship in the beginning, it seemed like everything was great. But you know something? I say this because you know in the beginning of a relationship, even with a friendship, you know, you meet their representative. You you always meet someone's representative when they come to the table, okay? Because why would anybody who wants to be with you or start a relationship with you come as their true 110% self? 
That's like me going to into a relationship. Just coming. I'm, I'm gonna just go like this. I'm gonna be April. I'm gonna curse a lot. I'm gonna smoke my weed. I'm gonna have my wine. I'm, nigga, I'm gonna cuss you the fuck out. I'm gonna tell you what I really think of men. And some, not all of them, but some of y'all. I'm gonna do all of that. You think that that man is really gonna want to be involved with me if he sees me coming to the gun show, the gun fights with a with my my pistols already smoking? I'm already shooting. I'm already shooting. You know what I'm saying? That right? Why would I come like that? That I ain't got no chance of a relationship. If I really want to be with the person, and I really like them, then of course I'm gonna put on my best behavior. I'm a I'm a be I'm a be Becky. I'm gonna be Sarah. Okay, I'm gonna be one of those bitches that I'm really not. I'm going to come with a good attitude and my best behavior. That's your representative. That's who's representing me. Okay. Sarah represents me sometimes. You know what I'm saying? When I see you out in public, hey, how are you? That's Sarah. If you know me enough, what's up, bitch? What's up? What's good? Okay. Like some people say I'm ratchet. Like I really feel like when you are with someone... It's always a good thing to get along with their in with their family, They're your in laws. Okay, Th that's exactly what the fuck they are, and um, of course we want to get along with them, but does it always work out like that? Not at all. And I used to be that type of person where. I'm just going to hold back. I'm not going to say anything because that's your family and I don't want to be disrespectful. Please have a talk with them. Meanwhile, these motherfuckers are still disrespecting April and I'm still like, let me just chill. I don't want to be disrespectful to you guys. Fuck that, okay? It is always a good thing to to get try to get along, but when they are nosy, nosy meddling ass bitches, this sweetheart, I don't know what to tell you, but you know, she do need to mind her fucking business. And I, I feel you with the whole, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to agree with you because your son is about to start school, kindergarten. And I'm not really sure what the distance is from your home to school and his father's home to school. But in my opinion, and this just is me, and I could be wrong for saying this because I could be meddling and, and I maybe I need to mind my fucking business. But I would feel like it would be best for your son to be with you Monday through Friday for during the school days. And Friday nights to Sunday nights, he can, you know, be with his dad and so come home Sunday nights. You feel me? And maybe even on like holidays, like three day weekends, he could be with his dad. But because he's about to start school, I really do feel like it's beneficial for him to be in one household. You know how kids are, are used to, they're used to repetitive. They're used to certain things. And yeah, I get that he's used to going half the time here and half the time there. But because it's school, you know, who knows how it's going to portray when this young man is in school, how his dad is going to help him with his schoolwork, how his aunt Nosy is going to help him with his schoolwork. I just feel like it is best for him to be in the household with his mom during the school days and for the whole look you got the whole entire summer where he can spend the whole entire summer with his father sometimes it's unfortunate that we as people as grown-ups as parents cannot resolve something as a as a group as a unity together without involving the law like you mean you know what i'm saying like meaning lawyers you know parental um guardians you know mediators it's it's a shame that we have to seek out advice and help from people that are outside of the unity but sometimes we have to and sometimes it does work out in our favor and because you've already done that luna meaning you've already opened up a case where you both are able to share 50 50 with one another I think that maybe it's best that you continue doing so because you've already started the process of doing that. So why not continue to move forward and do that as well? I only say this because you've already started the process and it seems like it's kind of working out for you guys as well. And because the communication, there is a type of a barrier. I think that maybe you should continue on doing that as well. Of course, this lawyer is definitely going to be on Luna's side because she is paying for this service. However, he's also going, he or she is also going to follow the laws. They can't just be on your side and just feel like, well, I'm going to do just because Luna wants this. No, they still got to follow protocol. You know what I'm saying? 
And it's unfortunate that she has to get them involved in it. But it seems like she's already said she's already had altercations with James. And his sister is nosy as fuck. Okay. And he's... Girl, listen. I, I really don't want to say this shit. Because I'm trying to be so mature about this whole shit. I'm, 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 I have a sister. You know what I'm saying? My sister is... I'm, I'm 12 years older than her. So, if I'm 47, she is 35. My sister don't have no kids, but my, my sister is not, she's not ratchet, and we like this, you know what I'm saying, but she don't be meddling in my fucking affairs and in my business, you know what I'm saying, she don't, she don't do shit like that, you know what I'm saying, she don't do shit like that, and that's the one thing that I appreciate about her, like, even if that's your family, sometimes they need to learn their boundaries, and it's unfortunate, like, it's always, seems like it's always the females and sisters, they always want to run their motherfucking mouth, like, shut the, look, STF you bitch STF fucking you bitch Shut the fuck up Okay who who? You don't even have no kids of your own Shut the fuck up And You know what I'm saying Like I hate a fucking family member That always try to meddle Like mind your fucking business Like seriously just please mind your business Okay What I feel for you is You're doing the right thing And continue to do what you're doing Don't switch it up Don't change it for anyone If it's making you feel comfortable Then do what makes you feel comfortable If you don't want to live in North Carolina For the rest of your life Then sweetheart You know you got to make that adjustment and you got to make that change. I get that. Look, I didn't want to live in New York anymore and I came here. I left and came here. Now, what I did, not saying that, which what I did is good for you. No way, shape or form. You know what I'm saying? You got to take different roads and different, you know what I'm saying? Ramps. Me, I made my own fucking ramp and it, it's what, what it was and what April said it was going to be. But therefore, you've already started a certain process. So therefore... You, in my eyes, I feel like you should continue with this only because if it allows you to be able to communicate better with your baby father, if it allows you to have a peace of mind, and if it also allows you to put everything in the perspective and align everything properly where it needs to go, then by all means, I would say continue what you have been doing. If it's working for you, Luna, then continue that. If you need that lawyer to speak on your behalf because your son is about to start school and you want your son to be with you 70 to 80% of the time, or whatever then you should allow that lawyer to continue to speak on your behalf because you've already involved them as far as dating other men you have every right to date whomever you want this is not a time in your life when you have to halt and stop because you're not with James anymore is he stopping his life for you you can say no you can say yes in all honesty, do you really, really know? You're not a fly on his wall. You really don't know what's going on. But this is a time in your life where once you become comfortable and you have loved yourself and have gotten yourself where you need to be, you know what I'm saying? You gotten your shit together. You have been prepared. You have done all the right things for you, your son. Then why not become like, why not, why not go back into the dating world? You know what I'm saying? When the time is right for you, then you do that. Just be careful. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, I say this to anybody who wants to go out there and start dating again. Be careful. That's all. Just be careful. You know, I watch so many of these shows and I think that's the downfall for me. And I think that's probably why I, I'm like, no, I don't want to, no, you can't have my number. No, get out of here. It's because I watch so many of those shows and I'd be so paranoid about anybody, you know, that it's like, I don't want to date anybody because I don't know you and you can tell me something until I'm green and blue in the face. How do I know that's true about you? You could be a psycho. I don't know. I don't know you from a hole in the wall. So I get really leery and I get very like paranoid about certain situations and you know what I'm saying? Like everybody deserves a companion. Everybody deserves to be happy. I don't know if watching these shows have have brought out the worst to me to where I just like shun everyone away from me. But I will say this, Luna, just be careful because there are really some weirdos out there in the dating scene. And it sucks that you don't know who to choose and what's good and what's not, you know what I'm saying, ahead of time. 
but you deserve happiness as well but as well as happiness you deserve honesty and safety honey and just for once be careful you know what I'm saying please by all means be careful in the dating scene but you you deserve happiness and like that as well for myself like you know like right now I'm not really looking for any I'm not looking for anybody okay and I'm I'm definitely not and um I am looking for one person, <laughs> but um, I'm going to have to tell that to y'all another time about, <laughs> okay, I never knew that this one particular person had a crush on me, and my kids kept saying this, but I didn't know this, okay, and you know, he gave me his phone number, but he did say if I had an issue with my FedEx package, okay, but he'd been delivered, <laughs> yeah, Okay, I have to, if you guys want to hear the story about the FedEx guy or info, just post it in the comments below and I'll definitely share that with you guys. I would love to, but this video is not about me. So if you want to know about it, um, put it in the comments and I will talk about it the next real talk. Oh, don't, Nay looks so cute. You should see what her makeup looks like, guys. You see her makeup? Hi. You should have tried my vegan lashes. These are vegan. vegan lashes. Oh, they are. Funny. She's so grown. She's 19. And I told them I was going to be a little late, but I'm like, okay. Which more are you going to? I don't know. I've never going to eat around there. Oh, they're not coming to get you? No. You driving by I yourself? Said, yeah, because I said I was like, I'm going to be running a little late, so I'll just Why? Because I was doing my makeup, and I was taking a minute. And um, plus, I like to take my car when I go places so I can leave whenever I feel like it. That's how I be feeling. Leave when you want to. Don't depend on nobody else for a ride. I hear you. That's how me and Nicole got into that fight. Remember? Yeah. She cracked my motherfucking really windshield. Like people gas. Oh yeah. So. All right then. Have fun. Do right, you want anything? What the hell am I gonna want for tomorrow? Well, if we go out to eat, you would you like something back? I'm fat. Remember, I went to the weight doctor today. Right. I went to the buffet. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone deserves happiness everyone deserves a, a healthy relationship you know and unfortunately james wasn't able to give that to you once your son was born but now is the time to take advantage of life in its blissfulness and happiness you know covid is probably over i'm not really sure if it ever started but just be careful take your time and be safe i love you guys you love me make sure you rate comment subscribe yes i gotta go get my nails done um when y'all watch this video i'm gonna be getting my nails done because it's gonna be wednesday when this video goes up and wednesday is when i'm gonna get my nails done look at that shit this is my freaking nail okay this is my nail do y'all see that that's my nail my nails have grown that fast okay so i really want to just take them off and be done with them right now i'm just like <sighs> i think the weight has got me down i'm not even down but i don't know i'm about to go for a walk though anyway but i love you all make sure you rate comment subscribe let me know what y'all think of this video if y'all want me to talk about fedex write that down what y'all think about my lash line write that down and i love you all make sure you rate comment subscribe watch my other video show support a bitch gotta get paid i love you